simulating realistic human skin with silicone. In this video, I'm going to go over the process of airbrushing a thin membrane of silicone into a mold and then backfilling it with a softer layer of silicone to simulate human skin and more specifically fatty tissue in soft areas of the human anatomy. Now for this process, we're going to be using some TC5100. Now this is a soft, stretchy silicone formula. This cures to about a double O softness of 25. So a double O 25. And this is typically a silicone that's used for silicone mask making and medical simulators and other applications requiring a realistic, elastic, soft, skin-like material. Now for this application, we're actually going to be softening this silicone to simulate the properties of fatty tissue. Now TC5100 is of course a platinum silicone system, so real important to be careful about cure inhibition. But what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna mix up a small batch of silicone and pour this into one of my little resin ear test molds. And for that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of silicone pigment. Typically I add pigment well below 1% for translucent skin applications. And then we mix that up and with the TC5100, this has a working time of about 30 minutes at room temperature and a demold time of three to four hours, again, at room temperature. So roughly about 75 degrees or so. Now this is a very low viscosity silicone system. And because of that long working time, a lot of simple applications will de-air themselves, but always a good idea to vacuum degas for large pores to eliminate the little micro bubbles you get in the process of mixing the A and B components together. Now again, 5100 at room temperature has about a 30 minute working time and a three to four hour demold. Real important, remember that platinum silicones are accelerated with heat and cold will slow them down. So if you're working in a warm work environment like here in the fine state of Texas, that will speed everything up. So be aware of that. And remember that the warmer the temperature is, the faster it goes. Now this is about four hours later and you see we have a nice stretchy tack free ear ready for paint if that's the direction we're gonna go. But in this application, we're going to be softening this by adding silicone fluid or the 5002, the SC5002 silicone thinner. Now this is the same ear that I cast up at a ratio of one part A, one part B to one part silicone thinner. And you see now that we have a kind of a tacky part. It's very elastic, very stretchy and soft, but it does have that slight surface tack to it. So when we're doing applications like we're gonna do in this video where we're simulating human skin, we want that really nice softness, but we don't want that tack on the surface. So for this application, we could either brush or spray in a thin layer into our resin mold of more silicone to create the realistic feel of human skin. Now this is a TC808 resin mold that I made in a previous tutorial. And again, I'll link that on the end screen. So definitely check that out. And we're going to first release that mold with a light spray of the Zip301 mold release. So we're gonna spray that in, set that aside to dry. And that typically takes about 30 minutes or so, let everything dry and outgas. And now we're ready to mix up our silicone to spray in to create our membrane for our realistic skin surface. Now for that membrane, I'm actually gonna go with a slightly firmer silicone. For that membrane, we're gonna do that with TC5110F. This is a fast setting, soft, about a five shore A silicone. So about like average human skin right on the surface. And this of course is a formula that's mixed one to one by weight or volume. And we're just gonna mix a very small batch, only about 40 grams, so about 20 grams of part A and 20 grams of part B. And then we're going to be thinning that with a compatible thinner or a compatible solvent. And here are three solvent options. These are the ones that I mainly use in my workshop. The OSS, the odorless silicone solvent, the solvent thinner from Sculpt Nouveau, that's a xylene alternative, and of course, naphtha that you can find at most hardware stores. Now for this video, I'll be using the OSS. OSS is nice because again, it is odorless and it is a cosmetic grade solvent. So very friendly solvent to use for a lot of different applications. Now for an application like this, we're going to thin it considerably in order to put it through an external mix airbrush. 
So first I'm going to mix up my silicone. I got my A and B mixed together. And now I'm going to add a little bit of my silicone pigment to that. Again, we want a nice translucent skin. So we're just going to add a little bit of the pigment to that and stir that in before we add our solvent. And I always like to add my pigment before the solvent just to get that pigment thoroughly mixed into the base components before I start thinning that out. And that's more of a preference thing. There's not a, a chemistry issue. It's just a lot easier to mix in your pigments before you start adding a solvent to that. So again, once I've got that mixed up, I'm ready to add my solvent to that mix. And remember, the clock starts ticking as soon as those components are together. So remember, we have a seven to eight minute working time and about a one hour demold with the 5110F. Now, since we're going to be running this through an airbrush, I'm going to add a significant amount of solvent to thin this to an airbrush consistency. Typically for running this through an external mix airbrush, I like to uh, thin this to the level of about like skim milk. And for this uh, particular silicone, the 5110F, the nice thing is this already starts out at a low viscosity, so it doesn't take as much as it might take with thicker silicones. And I'm basically doubling the volume of my silicone by adding this solvent to it. And by doing that, that gets me that kind of skim milk kind of consistency. And it's important to remember that the solvent will all flash off, leaving the silicone behind. So if you're using a compatible solvent, that won't affect the cure of your platinum silicone. Now here's my airbrush setup. This is a very basic uh, compressor and simple external mix airbrush from Harbor Freight. Great for this kind of application uh, where you're not necessarily doing a fine art paint job. You're just coating the inside of a mold. And now I'm transferring that silicone to one of my spray bottles. And now I'm ready to spray. Now, as usual, anytime I'm doing an airbrush or any kind of spray application, I always like to spray that first on a piece of foam core board and just test the spray pattern, the intensity of the color, make sure everything's dress right dress before I start spraying that into my resin mold. Now for this application, because we don't want to wait a long time between coats of sprayed silicone, we want to force dry that with a hair dryer. So after each layer that I spray into the mold, I'm going to force dry that with a hair dryer on high. So here I'm just spraying that into the mold and always a good idea to turn that mold different directions. Make sure you get the entire inside of that mold coated well. And once we get a light spray of that all over the inside of the mold, then we're going to hit it with a hair dryer and force dry that layer. Now, this particular application, I did about four sprays of this, or about four layers. And these are all very thin layers that are being sprayed into the mold. But after each layer that I sprayed in, I hit it with a hair dryer and dried that, and then came back and sprayed it again. And I'm doing that for two reasons. One is just this is an efficient use of time and it eliminates puddling of the silicone in the mold. But also this allows me to work out of just that one single batch of silicone that I mixed up and thinned out for this application. So this is all just that same batch of silicone. And because I'm forced drying it, I'm able to get each layer to dry well within that working time. Now, once I'm done spraying, always a good idea to clean up your airbrush and your bottles with more of the same solvent. I just run that through my brush for a little bit and clean everything out. Again, external mix brushes are nice. They're not as accurate as an internal mix airbrush, but they're much easier to clean and maintain. So that's why I typically use them for these broader spray applications like this. Now your silicone is going to go through two stages where it's going to dry and then cure. And typically that will take uh, maybe an hour and a half, two hours from the time that you sprayed that in. Uh, less than that if you used a hair dryer on it. But there you see that silicone membrane on that foam core board. And that's just a really thin layer there. And you see how that's set up to a nice stretchy membrane of silicone. So now we're ready to mix up our silicone that we're going to use on the inside of the part. So we've sprayed in that thin layer of skin material on the outside that lines the inside of the mold. But now we need to back that up with our softer material. And to accurately simulate that fatty tissue layer, we're going to take the 5100 and mix it up one part A to one part B to one part SC5002. And that, of course, is the silicone thinner. So that will soften that silicone, make it a little bit more elastic. But again, the side effect of that, when we push it to that level, we're going to have a slightly tacky surface. 
Now mixing the 5100 1A to 1B to one part 5002 thinner is probably pushing it about as far as that formula can go. I haven't tried to see if I could push it any farther, but this particular formula, mixing it to this ratio, did slow it down considerably. So if you do that, if you're mixing a lot of silicone thinner, be ready for that to set slower than it normally would. That will change some of the curing properties. So be prepared to let that sit overnight if necessary. For this part, I poured it in an afternoon and I went ahead and let it sit overnight. So this sat for a good 12 hours or so before I demolded the finished part. And as you can see, that's like water thin. So I didn't even vacuum degas this batch. You Obviously you could do that, but because of that slow working time, it's gonna have a lot of time to just de-air naturally on its own. But again, very low viscosity. Went ahead and poured that into my resin mold and let that sit overnight. And then the next morning I was ready to come back and encapsulate that with more of the TC5110. Now this time I'm putting the 5110 on the back side of the mold. Now we could just pour it. You notice I left a little bit of a gap in that mold when I was pouring the silicone into that. And I did that with the purpose of having room for more silicone on the back side to encapsulate the part. Now for this application, I went ahead and thickened this with some of the uh, 5001 thickening agent. You don't have to do this, but there's applications where it really helps to be able to thicken the silicone and brush it on rather than just pour it and let it self level. So just wanted you to see that approach as well. And of course, this is more TC5110F mixed one to one. And then I'm adding here, in addition to the silicone pigment, I'm adding about 1% of the SC5001 thickening agent. And that's a fixotropic additive that converts that silicone from a pourable liquid to a brushable paste. And especially when we use it at that 1% level, that's actually a fair amount of it to add to that silicone formula. And you see that starts converting it more to a, a brushable gel rather than a pourable liquid. Real important to know about that additive because there's a lot of applications where you're going to want to uh, trowel or brush in a layer of silicone into a mold and be able to control that. And the SC5001 allows you to do that. So as soon as that reacts with the silicone, we get that nice thick brushable paste rather than a pourable liquid. And because we're using the 5110F, that's the fast formula, that has, again, about a seven to eight minute working time and about a one hour demold. So we're gonna brush that in. And I actually came back and troweled it a little bit as well, just to smooth off the back side of that. And then once we're done with that, ready to leave that alone, let that sit for about an hour, and then we're ready to demold our final part. Now, this is about an hour later, ready to demold our part. And for these kind of applications where I'm making these really soft skins like this, I like to have a piece of clean foam core board or a melamine coated plywood to immediately take this out of the mold and flip it over onto a board that uh, just keeps it clean and free from sticking to anything else in my work area. So in this case, I just cut up a piece of foam core board to pull this out and flop that down on that foam core. And now we have our finished piece of realistic human skin. So now we have our finished piece of realistic human skin. And because of that outside membrane, it doesn't have a tacky feel to it. And we can also paint this piece a lot easier now because of that layer of 5110F on the surface. Now, as usual, I'll put all the links to everything I used in this video in the video description, so be sure to check that out. And also check the end screen. I'll link to some of the previous tutorials, like the one where I softened silicone and go over some of the nuances of that, as well as the resin mold video and the cure inhibition video. All really good information when you're working with platinum silicones. So as always, thanks for watching and thanks for supporting the channel.